Hey guys, today we are going to see how you can create this scene as that you see in the viewport with Blender. And I'm going to use the new Blender version 3.3 and I'm going to use cycles for the render part. So basically we are going to see three portions in this tutorial. The first one is modeling, which we are going to model the glass in the candles. In the second one is texturing, we are going to use uh, free textures from mbcg.com in order to texture uh, the, the, the assets that you can see in the viewport and we are going to use also surface imperfection map to create imperfections on the glass that you can see and the third one is we are going to use HDR in order to light up the scene and also are going to use some kind of point light in order to create the effect that you have seen in the image so guys I hope this will be a really good learning curve when it comes to achieving photorealism in blender cycles but before we start the tutorial, you can find this the finished project file in the in my Patreon. And also, you can also find another project file that I have done from my previous tutorials. Not only that, you can also find my personal uh, project files and asset that I used for my interior visualization, which will uh, greatly help you in your interior visualization. Please, uh, if you want, you can support me on my Patreon. So when we start the tutorial, this is the project file that you will find in the description below. So as you can see, I have a simple setup right here. I have some kind of uh, cylinders and a floor and then a background which will be used for the modeling of the window. And also I have a camera setup. As you can see, if I go to the properties of the camera, I have a focal length of 107. Since this one is a really, you know, close up shot, uh, using a high focal length will be beneficial. We don't have uh, any kind of distortion. So that's why I used a high value of focal lengths. So basically, this is the C. You don't have to download it. You can just model it yourself. So when we start with the glass, what I'm going to do is just select one of the glasses. I'm in the cylinders. Go to the edit mode by pressing tab. Just go to the face selection mode. And I'm going to select the top face. Press I to insert it. I'm just going to insert it somewhere around here, which will be the thickness of the glass. And after this, just go to this face and activate this X-ray mode. And then press E to extrude it. And I'm going to extrude it somewhere around here. And after this, I'm going to press S and scale it just a little bit inwards. So after I have done that, after I have, you know, modeled the basic shape of the glass, what I'm going to do is get out of the edit mode by pressing tab and go to the modifier properties and add a modifier of bevel, as you can see. And I'm going to give it a segment of six so that I will have, you know, a smooth shape. And as you can see, we can see somehow the edge of this glass, right? As you can see, we... If even I just right click and shade smooth, we can see, you know, that the shape of the, the line, the, the lines of the, the cylinders. Since this one is a uh, close up shot, we need, you know, a high level of detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I can give it a value of two, you know, so that I have a really smooth shape since this one is a really close up shot. So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this one and later select this one, press control L and select linked object data so if i go to the edit mode let's say as i select this edge and if i press j as you can see any kind of editing that i made in the edit mode will be applied to this one but if i press s as you can see if i scale it outside of the edit mode it won't be applied right here but if i get inside the edit mode press a to select everything and press s to scale it as you can see it will be scaled uh, uh, with this one also so anything that's any manipulation that's done in the edit mode will be applied uh, to the other one so in order to apply the modifiers what i'm going to do is just select this one and select the one that's that has the modifiers later and press ctrl l and then go to copy modifiers as you can see what this will do is going to copy the modifier from this one and apply it uh, to this one as you can see we have our glass so when we go to the texturing let us start with the glass so i'm going to select this glass and go to the material properties right here and press new we have the default principal base diff and I'm going to change this one to class B stiff. So in order to see everything clearly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, you know, the render view and go to this render properties. I'm going to use cycles and change this one to GPU. If you have, you know, a GPU device, which will make your rendering uh, faster. And I'm going to, you know, deactivate this scene wallet so that I can use the, the built-in HDR right inside EV. So I'm going to use this one and give it a strength of 0.5 so that it won't be, you know, over uh, exposed. The default value is probably one it will be overexposed so just use a value of 0.5 this will be uh, a good value so to adjust our material uh, pro properly let me change this one to shader editor as you can see i'm going to change this one to shader editor so this is the default value of the glass i did the default property of the glass so i need to change the roughness to zero so that it will be you know uh, it will look like a glass 
we don't have we don't need any kind of uh, roughness so after this i'm going to adjust the ir value the ir value of at last is 1.333 yes this is the proper value so this is you know the glass material that uh, the default glass material but we are going to add some kind of notes you know so to get really uh, accurate uh, accurate uh, glass so press shift a and i'm going to add a transparent pstf and i'm going to use this notes together press shift a and again search mix shader and i'm going to place this one in the middle and i'm going to place the transparent in the second socket as you can see we have mixed them but the the result that we get is not that much good so what i'm going to do is just press shift a and add a light path and place it right here press shift a again and add, add a math node and change this one to greater than and give it a threshold value of 10 i'm going to plug the ray dubs you know, the ray dibs into the into this value and i'm going to use this one as the factor so after this what we need to do is we need to give this glass some kind of imperfect so that it will look more realistic but before that what i'm going to do is just type slash in your number in order to isolate this glass and after this let me uh, in the in the field let me deactivate activate this transparent so that i won't see you know the background of this hdr right so after this i'm going to use uh, a roughness map which i will link in the description below this is a, a texture from mbncg.com so i'm just going to drag and drop the roughness map you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to press ctrl t in order to add this mapping node if this does not pop out in your case what you have to do just go to edit and then preferences and in the add-on stop just type uh, node wrangler this will come and make sure that you have activated this one and after this, just save preferences so after this if you press ctrl t this will pop out so i'm going to plug this one to the roughness so in order to see clearly i'm going to ctrl shift click this one so as you can see the distribution of the textures uh, among the surface is not as i want it to be so what i'm going to do just go to the edit mode press a and then press u and then smart uv project you are going to uv unwrap this object and give it an aslan margin of 0 0.01 so after this after you have finished that what i'm what you have to do is just change this one to generated when you do that uh, the result that you get is not that much you know appealing so what you have to do is right here change this one to box so when you do that we have a proper arrangement of this textures this the proper arrangement of the textures along the surface and i'm going to give it a blend value of 0.2 so as, as i do that as you can see we, we won't have that that seam that we have seen earlier so if i change this one to zero as it was as you can see we will see uh, this uh, seam right here so just give it a plain value of 0.2 so that it we won't see any kind of seams so after this what i'm going to do is just press ctrl shift click this one to see clearly just go to ev so as you can see we see the imperfections placed perfect so the next thing that we need to do is i'm going to select this one i'm going to press shift d and duplicate this one and click this folder icon and i'm going to give it a, a normal map and i'm going to open this one and press shift a again and type a uh, normal map and plug this one to the color and the normal to the normal make sure that this one is a uh, uh, non-colored data if you, if it is for example this colored and as you can see the result we get is not that much accurate so just make sure that you have used non-colored data for anything other than the albedo and also for the roughness make sure that you are using non-colored data so the next thing that we need to do in order to control this roughness is press shift a and add a color ramp and place it in the middle so if i just control shift click this one as you can see this is our map so if i change this white value and bring it to the black file as you can see the map will be more white more white means more roughness if i change this one to uh, the black file as you can see the roughness map is almost disappearing so we will only have those roughness maps on the white portions so we can control the amount of roughness that's applied by using this you know color ramp panel so if i just control shift click this one again to see everything clearly uh, let me just make it right around here so if i just select this white part and place it right there, as you can see we can see those roughness are more uh, intense than the previous one so we can control the amount of the roughness that will be applied right here so there's also another way that we can control the amount of the roughness I mean the amount of uh, the imperfections that's applied on this uh, glass without you know controlling the roughness 
so what is what we are going to do is i'm going to select everything without the surface imperfections so i'm going to select this and i'm going to press shift d and duplicate this one and i'm going to select this mix rgb and shift d and to duplicate it and place it right here and i'm going to plug this one at the at the bottom so what i'm going to do is i will have one glass setup without imperfection and i will have one without uh, surface imperfection i'm with surface imperfection and i'm going to mix both of them so if i change this one to one as you can see the glass will be 100 percent clear which will be using the second the second node which is uh, the glass without any surface imperfections and if i make this one to one it will use this one with surface imperfection so by by using this method you know we can also uh, control the amount of the imperfection that's applied so just uh, you know use a value that's suitable for you I'm going to use 0.54 now we can adjust this uh, later based on the lighting that we are going to use but for now I think the result that we got is is good let me just make it somewhere around here like this yep so just press tab in order to unhide everything to unisolate everything again and what I'm going to do is as you can see we have some kind of black portions right here the light pass is not being calculated correctly so in order to fix that what you are going to do is go to this uh, lighting set uh, the render properties and in the uh, in the light path where is the light path right here give it a glossy value of 12 so when i do that as you can see uh, as you can see we, those black portions are now gone and we have really accurate really good uh, glass that's visible right here so for example if i give it a glossy value of one as you can see uh, it's not been calculated uh, that much in accuracy so just make sure that you have used the optimum value for example i can use this one as 32 and also i can make this one 12 as, but the result that we get is not much, that much you know different from each other so make sure that you are using the optimized value in order to decrease the render time for this case i'm going to use a glossy value of 12. so after this just select this glass material I mean glass material and go to the material properties and drag and drop this material right here so we have finished setting up the glass so for texturing the plank what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the plank and press slash number in your, in your keyboard to isolate it and i'm going to go to the modifier properties and let me just somehow increase the yep something like this i'm going to increase the modifier like this and the solidify like this and i'm going to apply it so after this what i'm going to do is just go to the edit mode in the edge selection mode just select uh, sharp edge and then press uh, right click and then mark c and after this if you press in your keyboard it will slide out this tab and make sure that the scale is applied make sure that everything is one in order to make that happen press ctrl a and scale this will be one so after this what you have to do is uh, press a go to the edit mode press a u and then uh, unwrap this will unwrap it and if i go to the uv editor and to see the uv map as you can see this is the uv map of this uh, this plank since we have an array modifier as you can see uh, we will we will only have the uv map of one of the the plank and this will this uv map will be applied for the rest of the repetition so this is the the first thing that we need to do and then second in the shader editor pressing in order to add a new principal bsd and select this one and press ctrl shift t and it will pop out a, a folder so what you have to do is just select the material that you, you need to apply so this is the material that i'm going to use plank 001 I'm, I'm going to link i'm going to place the link in the description so i'm going to i'm going to select the color the displacement the normal and i'm going to select the roughness so after this just select this principal texture setup so this will uh, give you a, a a very simple texture setup so after this as you can see uh, the texture is almost the same in every plank so what you have to do is in the uv in the array in the uv just just change this one right here and make, make sure that you are creating a variation so as you can see we, we, all, we don't have that repetition that we used to have earlier so so the next thing that i'm going to do is press shift a in our rgb curves and i'm going to place this one in the middle of the color and you know in the middle of the color in the principal piece tip and i'm going to use this rgb curve in order to uh, control you know the texture so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it a little bit dark and i'm going to use three points i'm going to add another point right here and i'm going to add another point right here so i'm going to use this point and i'm going to just you know uh find the place that that gives me a good result as you can see i'm just creating a version as you can see we have some kind of white part and we have 
red part right here. I'm just creating a texture variation by using only this RGB curve. So by using, you can, you can just create a feeling that this wood is really old. So if I just select this one and press M to mute it, as you can see, this this does not end that much old. But if I press M, as you can see, it looks much older. So this the lower part will control the overall lightness and darkness of you know the the texture and this as you can see i'm just going to go to the red and i think it's a little bit red so i'm just going to decrease the red value i can also use something like this as you can see i can just uh, i can just really create a really weathered uh feeling on the plank as you can see it looks like a plank where the there was a painting and the painting is uh, you know fading away so by using this, you can create the texture that you are going for. So I'm just going to leave this one as it is. And depending on the lighting that we are going to use, we can adjust this later. So if I just press, so if I just press slash number in my keyboard, so I isolate everything and this is the result. And I'm going to select this window right here and I'm going to go to the this properties and I'm going to press new in order to add a material and go to the edit mode. And I'm going to select this, this one by free selection mode and press new again. And I'm going to give this one the glass that we have used. Let me find the material right here. Material 003. And I'm going to rename it as glass. GLSS. And select this one and change this one to glass. So that they will have the, the same material. And I'm going to go to edit mode and make sure that you have assigned it. As you can see, after I have assigned it, I can see through the window right now. And I'm going to change this one to uh, this material. Just I'm just going to change this one to planks. And I'm going to select this one and change this one to plank. P L A N K S. Yep. But as you can see, th this is not UV wrap, so we are not seeing the, the texture incorrectly. So what I'm going to do is just go to the edit mode by pressing tab, go to a selection mode, and uh, go to select sharp edge, and then right click mark seam. So after this, press any new keyboard. Make sure that the scale is applied. So after this, go to edit mode, press A and then you unwrap. So when you do that, as you can see, the texture is being applied really correctly. As you can see, but the scale is not uh, proper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this one is selected already and I'm going to click this uh, new material. It's going to make this one a separate material. And in the scale, press shift A and I will add a value node. And I'm going to place this one right here. And I'm going to give it maybe a value of five, you know, so that I will have this. I think this one is looking good. And for the glass also, I'm going to select the glass. I'm going to make it a different, different material. And I don't need any of this, you know, no extra notes. I, I need the, the clear glass. Since this will this glass will be out of focus, I'm not going to need it that much. So just control X this one. And this is just a simple glass material that I need. We have almost finished shading up the scene. So what I'm going to do is just go to this viewport shading. And I'm going to select this one. And we're going to mod it and, you know, texture the candle. So just go to the edit mode and I'm going to select this face, press shift D to duplicate it and then press P and then selection. And if I get out of the edit mode, as you can see, this will be in a separate measure. So I'm going to scale it just a little bit inward. And after this, what I'm going to do is just select it, press tab to go to the edit mode, just activate this extra mode so to see through the glass, press A and then E to extrude. And I'm going to go to this uh, view so that I can see what I'm doing. I think right around here will be good. Let me deactivate this, uh, the bevel and the subdivision for now. And I'm going to press GZ and move it right here. And if I activate the bevel, let me decrease the amount 0.001. I think will be good. Yes. And I don't think I need the subdivision, but I'm going to keep it in case uh, I need it later. So this is the candle. Yeah, I think I will need the subdivision so that, you know, I, I will have that uh, perfect smoothness. And after this, go to the edit mode and I'm going to press I to insert it somewhere around here. And I'm going to press I to insert it again. Press GZ. I'm going to yep, move it somewhere around here. And let me uh, deactivate this bevel and the subdivision for now to see clearly. And then insert again and press GZ to, uh, you know, move it upward. And then I to insert it again somewhere around here. In E to extrude it, and I'm going to extrude it downward, and I'm going to press Shift D, and then P, and then selection. This will be used in order to uh, to model, you know, the the part with where the light will be placed. So I'm just going to activate everything right here, as you can see. 
so this is my lamp i mean the sorry the the candle after this i'm going to select this one press uh, the tab in order to go to the edit mode activate this x-ray mode to see uh, through the candle and press a and i'm going to press e to extrude it press controller add a number of subdivisions so after this just make sure that you have activated this proportional editing and alt click this edge right here so if when you are zooming if you have a clipping issue what you have to do is just press in 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 the view in the clip start just make the minimum volume 2.001 it will uh, solve the clipping uh, problem so what i'm going to do is if i press gx as you can see it's going to move it so if i scroll my middle mouse upward and downward it will increase the influence area so just i'm going to just uh, you know make it somewhere around here so i'm just going to uh, deactivate this bevel and i'm going to only keep the subdivision so after this what i'm going to do is this uh, as you can see this has the same as the glass uh, material so i'm going to delete this one and press new and i'm going to give it a candle material so for the candle it's just a simple material to see it clearly just hit the slash numpad and i'm going to go to this uh, render view so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give it a subdivision uh, i mean subsurface value of one this is just basically the, the the material of a candle it's not that much complicated but what i, I want to do is i'm just going to i'll click this edge and i'm going i want to bevel it so that i will have you know higher bevel Yep, I think something like this will be good. Yep, slash numpad in my keyboard again to unhide, to isolate everything. So for this one, what I'm going to do is let us set up the material for this one. This one is also glass. So I'm just going to delete this one. So just hit slash numpad to isolate it and press new. I mean, to, to press new to create a new principal base tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a gradient texture to set up this thing. So just press shift A and add a gradient texture. And I'm going to place this one to the best color for now or I don't need it I'm just going to plug it sorry I'm just going to plug it right here and I'm going to press ctrl uh, T in order to add a mapping node so if I just go to the render view to see clearly or I can go to EV I think that's better as you can see we have some kind of black portion right here so what I'm going to do is press shift A and add a color ramp and I'm going to place it right here so that we can control the black portions in the gradient as you can see you can control those parts so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the, as you can see, the gradient is not being applied properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the value of, you know, the Y. Yep, I think somewhere around will be good as you can see. Yep, I think, I think the positive value gives me a good result. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one, Shift D, and I'm going to mix two textures. So press Shift A and add a color ramp, I mean a mix shader. And I'm going to place it right here. I mean, place it this one right here. Place this one at the first, and we're going to use this one as the as the mask. So the first one will be white, and the second one, I mean, the first one will be white, and the second one will be black. So I'm just going to select this one, and I'm going to make it black. So as you can see, this will be the the burn part of the candle. As you can see, this will be the burner part. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to texture the flame part of the candle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use I'm going to select this one and press Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to select this one again. I'm going to duplicate it and place it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this one as you can invert the black in the white part somewhere around here. And I'm going to use this one as the factor and press Shift A and add an emission shader. And I'm going to use this one for the second part. Let me make this one the first. Yep. So this is the setup that I'm going to use. So as you can see, this is the result that I'm getting. As you can see, this part is the emission. So if I just change this one to somehow red. Yep, I think this is what it's going to be. I think something like this. I can increase the, the emission strings like this. So I can control also uh, the gradient of this white part. I mean the, the emission part as you can see if i just drag this one up and downward i can control it so the next thing that we need to give this is a little bit too smooth so i'm going to give it a displacement texture so just go to right here i have uh just let me delete this one i was working earlier so just press new and i'm going to use a, a cloud texture and i'm going to decrease the, the the scale somewhere around here will be good and in the this bar in the so in the modifier part just add a displace right here as you can see when i do that it's it's going all over the place so what i have to do is just change this one to uh i think this one is also i mean change this one select this one in 
select the texture that you have created and i'm going to change this one to uv so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to decrease the strength to 0.001 so when i do that i have some things just 0.00 uh, maybe make this one to 0.5 as you can see i have you know some displacement just make sure that you have added um uh, placed the proper value let me insert the value of nine so i think this one is looking good right i think this one looks perfect so this is how you can model it just press ctrl s to save everything and hit slash numpad so as you can see this is the result that we have got i think it's looking good so if i go to the cycles to see clearly as you can see it looks really good so if i go to the edit mode i mean the camera mode i think the it looks really 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 good so the next and most important step that we need to do is the lighting so for the lighting what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to the solid view i mean the viewport shading and if i press alt it to unhide everything as you can see i have finished the house just make sure that the light is only coming through the window and anything uh, other than that will be uh, have to be closed so uh that's what i did as you can see and the next thing that you have to do is just go to the camera view and if i go to the render view as you can see uh it's using the built-in HDRI. So in order to change that, I'm going to activate the scene wallet. When I do that, as you can see, we are not seeing anything. The reason for that is there's no lighting in the scene. So to, to give it an HDRI, I'm going to use an add-on called Easy HDRI. So just you can install it, it's a free add-on. You can watch a tutorial on how to install this add-on, just a really simple add-on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the folder where my HDRs are placed. In this case, I've already selected that. What I'm going to do is just select this fix worldly nodes. In your case, if you're using it for the first time, it will be create worldly nodes. So I'm just going to click this one. So as you can see, with without even doing anything, this is the default lighting that we are going to get. So I have downloaded a bunch of HDRIs, but I'm going to link that is uh, I'm going to link this HDRI in the description, which I'm going to use for this tutorial. So as you can see, you can select between different hdris which will give you you know different results so whenever you change the hdri you will get different lighting in this case i'm going to use this first hdri and the next the thing that you need to adjust this in the in the rendering part in the viewport make sure that you have activated this dino so that you know you can see your renders uh, the your preview clearly and in the color management i'm using filmic color management which is a default in blender 3.0 and i'm i'm using the look of uh, medium high contrast you can just change this one to uh, you know high contrast it just basically will depend on on the on your visualization or on your need so after i added the hdr right the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the viewport display and go to the top view select this house let me activate this extra I mean, uh, show overlays and i'm going to press h to hide it and i'm going to select this one select this candelator press shift d and i'm going to place this one somewhere around here anything right here will be good and after this uh, as you can see i have two candles and i'm going to make this one uh with no light and i'm going to make this one with a light so what i'm going to do is just shift right click right here and go to edit and preferences in the add-ons just type images planes and make sure that you have activated this add-on so after this press shift a and add image and images planes and I'm going to select a texture that I downloaded from textures.com. I will place the link in the description below. I'm going to place this one right here. So to see it clearly, I'm going to change this one to texture. So when I do that, as you can see, you can see the texture in the viewport. So after this, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, we have a portion that we don't need. So just go to the edit mode, press Ctrl R, and place it somewhere around here. So after this, just select the bottom face, press X, and then faces. And after this, just go to EV viewport shading and in the material sub as you can see this is the material that the blender has set up so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug the color to the alpha so that I will have uh, I will have the result that I'm looking for let me wait until the shaders are compiled as you can see we have a really good looking uh, flame as you can see and after this what i'm going to do is i'm going to press shift d to duplicate it and press rz in the 90 you know so that it, it will it won't be flat from uh, another angles so if i press slash numpad again to isolate this as you can see it's it's not the result that you are going for so what i'm going to do is press shift a8 add an uh add an emission shader emission shader and place this one at the top and then press shift a8 again 
add an add shader. So I'm going to add both of these shaders and plug this one right here. So now we have an emission, so we can control the emission of this texture. If I make it five, as you can see, it will it will emit a lot of light. So if I press slash numpad in my keyboard to see what I have done. So as you can see, this is the result that I did. And I think we have somehow, uh, you know, uh, finished uh, the things that we need to do for the glasses. But as you can see, the scene is looking kind of empty. So we need some kind of background and some kind of foreground. So for the background, I'm going to use a lot of canvas that will be placed at the back. So as you can see, I have added a background. And for the foreground, as you can see, I have used some kind of human dry leaves, which you'll find in the project file. So as you can see, by using this kind of meters, you can fill your scene. And also I'm going to use some kind of lighting outside of the window. So as you can see, to, to give our scene further detail, what I have used is I have used point lamps, which are behind the glass, so that, you know, we will have some kind of lighting effect that's coming outside of the window. So if I just go to, if I navigate and go to the solid view and we'll activate the shower list, as you can see, these are the point lights that I have used. So the last and most important thing that we have to do is we have to add some kind of smoke right here. So we're not going to use any kind of smoke simulation. We're going to use alpha texture that I have downloaded from uh, texture.com. I'm going to place the link in the description below. So what I'm going to do is just go to the solid view right here again. And then uh, let me select this part press point in order to uh, snap right here, press shift click right here and press shift A, add image as planes. So after this, what I'm going to do is just go to downloads and I'm going to select the texture that I'm going to use. I think I'm going to select, uh, I think you can select, I, let me select this one and I'm going to import as image as planes. So after this, as you can see, I have imported it and I'm going to scale it until it fits the scene. Press GZ and then let me just place it I think somewhere around here would be good. And after this, I'm just going to scale it and change this one to 3D cursor so that it will scale it along with the 3D cursor. So after this, press zero in your keyboard and press RZ. I'm going to rotate it uh, so that it will face the camera and press S to scale it. I think somewhere around here will be good. So after this, if I go to the render view to see clearly, and I'm going to hit tab in my keyboard to isolate everything. And what I'm going to do is just uh, as I have done earlier for the for the uh, for the bulb for the flame part, press Shift A8, add an emission shader, and I'm going to place the emission right here. Press Shift A again, press Add Shader, and just I'm going to mix this one uh, with this one, and place this one right here. And I'm going to use this one for the color input. And I'm going to use the color for the alpha. I mean, sorry, for the color for the alpha. And let me just. So if I press slash numpad in my keyboard to isolate everything. So this is the smoke that we are getting. But the smoke is a little bit too bright. So what, what you can do is I can you can adjust the, the strings right here. I think something like this would be good. Um so guys, this is all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and please, if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can keep making videos like this in the future. See you in the next video.